Two of the most critical phases of flight are takeoff and landing, and it's important for a pilot from the beginning of flight training to learn how to properly obtain the distance their airplane will require to complete both of them safely. In this video, EasyFly will show you how to properly use takeoff and landing charts of a Cessna 172S model. For our takeoff demonstration, we will be departing from Miami Executive Airport, which has a field elevation of 10 feet. Before we begin, we have to make sure we read the conditions that this chart includes for our takeoff, which is based on the short field technique. And according to our POH, for normal or conservative takeoff distances, we need to consult the chart at its next higher value of weight, temperature and altitude. For our scenario, we will stick to the values presented on the 2550 pound chart. Our current temperature is 27 degrees Celsius and we will have a headwind of 14 knots on departure. The first thing we will need to do is to determine the pressure altitude from the airport we are departing from, but considering that pressure altitude only has a slight difference with the elevation of the airport, we will use the closest value from our table. Today's pressure altitude is minus 180 feet, therefore we will use the values presented under sea level. Considering that our temperature is 27 degrees Celsius, we will have to interpolate between the values of 995 feet and 1070 feet for our ground roll distance, which is how long it will take the airplane to attain sufficient lift of speed for rotation. The way we interpolate is by getting the difference between these two values, which is 75 feet, and dividing it by 10, which ends up being 7.5 feet. By doing this, we will know how much will our distance change for every degree of temperature change. Considering that we are 7 degrees higher than 20 degrees, we will multiply 7.5 times 7 and add this product to the 20 degrees centigrade value of 995 feet, which will end up making our ground roll a distance of 1047.5 feet. To continue, we have to take into account the notes presented on the chart. For our S scenario, note 3 will be the one that must be applied considering we have 14 knots of headwind. The chart says that we have to decrease distances by 10% for each 9 knots of headwind component. Therefore, by doing simple math and multiplying 14 times 10 and dividing it by 9, we can figure out the exact value to subtract from our takeoff distance, which ended up being 15.6%. Therefore, for our final ground roll, we will have to subtract 15.6% from our previous ground roll value of 1,047.5, which will make our final answer a total distance of 884.1 feet. And if we repeat the same process for our total distance to achieve rotation and clear a 50-foot obstacle, we will end up having a result of 1,497.26 feet. And now, let's continue with the landing scenario. Let's say we're landing at the Cincinnati International Airport in Northern Kentucky, where the field elevation is almost 900 feet. The first thing we will need to do is consider the conditions presented on our chart, which once again are based on the short field technique. The 172S model only has a 2,550 pound chart, so we will stick to that one. The weather conditions for our landing are the following. We will have 24 degrees outside and a headwind component of 13 knots. Our altimeter setting is going to be 29.77, which will make our pressure altitude a value of 1046 feet. And considering we have a temperature of 24 degrees Celsius, we will have to interpolate between the values of 605 feet and 625 feet, for 20 and 30 degrees respectively, to obtain our ground roll distance. We will repeat the same process we did for takeoff, which consists of subtracting these two values and dividing the total by 10, which results in an answer of 2. And then considering our current temperature is 4 degrees above 20, we will multiply this value times 4 and add it to the 20 degrees Celsius value of 605 feet, which will make our ground roll a distance of 613 feet. After that we will have to refer to our notes section and see which one applies to us. And in this case, considering we have 13 knots of headwind, we will have to decrease our landing distance based on what note 2 says, which is the only one that applies to our current scenario. The note states that we have to decrease our landing distance 10% for each 9 knots of headwind. And considering we have 13 knots, the same math process that we applied for takeoff has to be applied here, which consists of multiplying 13 times 10 and dividing that result by 9. And that will tell us the exact percentage to subtract from our distance based on 13 knots of headwind. And the answer to that is 14.4%. 
So our last step will be to subtract 14.4% to our distance of 613 feet, which will give us a final landing ground roll distance of 524.72 feet. And if we repeat the same process to determine the total distance we will need to clear a 50 foot obstacle on our threshold and land, our landing distance will end up being 1197.54 feet. And there you have it guys, easy math that will keep us safe on every takeoff and landing. Don't forget to subscribe and to check our other courses at myeasyflight.com. Thanks for watching.